but that guy just cut me off. Learn to drive you. So I was browsing Facebook Marketplace like I do, looking for hot local single uh, deals in my area. I come across this Dell Optiplex 7010. I'm like, oh, this is a decent OEM system. I know these tend to have good parts in them. So I'm taking a look at this one and it's got an i5-3570. Not only that, but it came with eight gigs of RAM. And according to the listing, it came with a 240 gig SSD. And the whole thing was a hundred bucks and I'm sitting on it for the longest time. I'm like, God, if I don't pick this up now, I'm not going to get it. I'm thinking about throwing some kind of half decent graphics card in this system. But other than a graphics card and a power supply, I'm also thinking about throwing a hard drive in the build. It's only a couple minutes to 10 and I was supposed to meet them at 10, but I should be there in time, but right on the nose, hopefully. Who's honking at me? It wasn't my fault, I was making a right turn. Okay, heck yeah. Got the system, here it is. Okay, so like I said, this is an Optiplex 7010. Oh, it even comes with a disk drive. Heck yeah. I'm probably gonna switch this case out though, but that's okay. This case is actually a lot sharper than I thought it was. Not physically, but like it looks good. And something I didn't realize was it's got a toolless side panel. Of course, it's very dusty, but like I said, that's not a big deal. I've seen worse. So that's where our third gen quad core i5 sits. Two sticks of RAM right here, total of eight gigs. And then just right here's our little 240 gig SSD. And what's this power supply good for? Okay, it looks like it says max output should not exceed 240 watts. Yeah, so if I'm gonna throw a graphics card in this system, I'm gonna have to ditch this thing, get a new one. And I think I'd have to, cause I don't even see PCIe cables sitting anywhere. That was an issue I had with my e-machines. I was thinking about throwing my 960 in that and it just, it doesn't have PCI express cables. What's this thing do? Oh, wait, <gasps> toolless five and a quarter inch, what? This is a sick case, but for as sick as it is, I think I might end up replacing it. I'm not 100% sure what, but if I list this online, then yeah, I want it to look nice and pretty. We got and pretty it shall look. Hi, it's me from the future. Minor update, I've actually gone and purchased several parts that need to go towards this system. I found the 1050 Ti on eBay. I got it for 92.12. The big reason I wanted to go with the 1050 Ti is because they only need power from the PCI Express slot, not external power. So so that saves me the money from having to buy a new power supply. Now, like I said in the video, the max output shouldn't exceed 240 watts on that power supply. But if you remember the video I did on my e-machines, which you can watch up here, I think it is, or over here, I never know which side it is. You'd remember that power supply was 250 watts. So I might switch the two out just for those 10 extra watts of power. But getting back to the idea of getting a pretty case, I went with the Cooler Master Q300L. The Q300L is a super nice, relatively cheap MATX enclosure. Now, it's not anything crazy. It's fairly open, but the downside is that it only includes one fan. So, I bought a four pack of Apevia 412L RGB Spectra 120mm silent dual ring addressable RGB color changing LED fan for gaming with Ron Control 16X LEDs and 8X anti-vibration rubber pads four pack. <gasps> oh my god. So there's a absolute ton of these somewhat cheaper RGB fans on Amazon that you could get for super cheap. Like I got this one for $31 for four fans. I don't know for certain how well these fans perform. I've never used them in my life. From what I've heard and judging from the 153 ratings that average out to four and a half stars, I'm gonna take my chances. So not only is that extra airflow, but it's extra bling is too, because they're RGB. And because they only need a remote to change the colors, I don't have to worry about teaching somebody to use their own proprietary RGB software. I also got a one terabyte hard drive from Seagate. It's kind of an older model, but for 35 bucks. And I know that the Optiplex is going to be able to support this because it has the optical drive installed. So that means we're gonna have extra SATA power and extra SATA data. So I don't gotta worry about getting any more cables. So now that we got all that out of the way, I'm gonna put you back in the video. So here we go. We got a decent amount of USB ports right here. We got two, four, six. Now it looks like this PCI Express cover is a little bit bent, but like I said, I'm probably gonna end up switching this case out anyway for something that's pretty and magic and glowy because that's what sells on the market. Okay, so it's been a few weeks since I visited this project. There's some kind of weird virus going around. I'm finally back. I'm going to work on this. All the parts that I've bought have now arrived. So I'll go over them one by one in an unboxing. I wanna say these are the fans. Yep, I was right. Of course, they come in perfect nondescript packaging. Oh yeah, they don't even come in a different box. They're just right here. One, two, three, 
four 120 millimeter fully RGB color changing fans. A ton of screws, they all come in their individual bags. Color changing remote, and then the control box itself. This is the hard drive. I'm not too hopeful about this, because like, it's not in any shock resistant packaging. It's wrapped in cardboard. Like, there it is. That's it. It's, it's right there. It says it's got a two year warranty. This thing managed to get damaged in this packaging. I'm just gonna have to take advantage of that warranty. This right here is the graphics card. This is also a graphics card. I may or may not have bid on approximately eight eBay listings for 1050 Ti's and won four of them. I immediately canceled all my bids on other auctions I had because they were less than 12 hours to completion. eBay doesn't let you retract your bids. So I just had to manually go in and message the seller and say, hey, can you please retract my bid? I don't need two, let alone three or four 1050 Ti's. Here it is, EVGA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. Just a crap ton of packing paper. Yep, awesome. Please, I want my graphics card. Oh, this is the single fan one. So there it is right there. This is the mini EVGA GTX 1050 Ti. Bro, why is it like glued shut? I gotta open it with the freaking might of Zeus. Zeus. God, it's all sticky, gross. Now I'm a little more skeptical about this one because I've seen like three, four, five listings with like the same photos all involving this same box. I wonder if the owner of these cards had a whole bunch of them and used them for a mining run. Feels a lot lighter than I expected. Oh, there's like goo on it. Oh shoot, I wonder if they tried taking this thing apart. One of the stickers on top of the screw is like kind of torn, but that's okay. Cause now I've got two 1050 Ti's, one double fan, one single fan, and we'll figure out which one fits better within this system. And then last but not least, I picked up the Cooler Master Q300L Micro ATX Enclosure. Okay, so these are the magnetic meshes. And as you can see, they've got like this real cool, like isometric grid kind of design to them. You just smack them up on top. And then you got the second one, smack it on the front. Look at that, flawless execution right there. Oh, hold on, there's even like grommeted screws on the back. Are these supposed to be thumb screws? Oh snap, those do work like thumb screws. We've got these like really wacky looking screws right here. It just looks like a regular screw with like a Lego tire glued to it. So I'm gonna take this system outside, grab my air compressor and blow the heck out of it. Wait. <laughs> all nice and pretty now it's not gross and dusty it's not covered in god knows what and i also did the same thing to these graphics cards the 1050 ti's because if you remember this one had some like nasty freaking goop on it or something so i cleaned all that off which is some rubbing alcohol cleaned up the plastic shroud try to get some of the fingerprints and stuff off of it and i also hit them with the air compressor to blow some of the awful nasty dust out because this one especially was like honestly kind of gross and then after looking at these two side by side these both have the same pcb this one's just got an extended cooler on it. It's like, look, they're both this like real short version of the 1050 Ti, but otherwise they're both four gig. I don't think either of them are overclocked, but you know what? That is fine by me. I am now ready to throw these into the build. This, let's be real, doesn't look that nice compared to some of the flashy RGB gaming computers that are littering Facebook Marketplace. That is why 
I gotta build in this thing, the Q300L. Now once I throw some RGB fans in this system, it's going to look so much freaking better. And maybe that will help mask the fact that this is just some nasty like green PCB with green dims and then this basic stock cooler right there. But with that out of the way, I'm gonna start gutting this thing and transferring it all into here. So let's get started. Okay, so as you can tell, it's kind of not done. And that's because I've run into a couple roadblocks here and there. Unfortunately, this has to be a two-part series now because I physically do not have the means to complete this system in its current form. First things first, I decided to tackle the fact that this is a Dell OEM motherboard because it came from a Dell Optiplex OEM system. The unfortunate truth with OEM motherboards is that there is a metric butt ton of proprietary connectors. See that connector right there? One pin across, five pins down. What the heck do you think that does? You're probably wrong with whatever you said. It's a five pin fan connector. And that is specifically dedicated for this like kind of Garbo 92 millimeter fan. Like it's a five pin header. Here's a proprietary connector. Here's another proprietary connector and another one and another one. And it's just like, it's there's so much stuff going wrong. The power switch was up here and it had five pins. It originally had this plastic housing around it that had six open pin slots. The power switch 
physically would not fit within this proprietary connector. I had to completely bust this piece of plastic off so I can get that power switch hooked up. I've been looking at some guides. Apparently, I gotta bridge these three connectors as well because it would detect an error otherwise. And I imagine that's what I'm gonna have to do with this connector as well. And when I first got this Optiplex, I thought, oh, maybe I'm gonna have to do that here. This case has intrusion detection. Basically, it's just this like little plastic post right here that when the side panel's on, this button is pushed down, which is then connected to this cable, which then plugs into to the motherboard and says, oh hey, the side panel is not open. So I was thinking, oh, I'm just gonna have to bust this plastic connector out, stick it in the case somewhere and like tape the button down forever. But other than the intrusion detection, the weird janky fan and the awful power switch, this is everything else. This is your USB 2, this is your reset switch, this is your headphone jack, your microphone jack, your HD audio, all that good stuff. It looks like a USB 3 connector almost. It is whatever the heck that this connector is right here. All of this controls USB 3, your USB 2, your headphone jack, your microphone jack. I'm gonna have to look for adapters to convert from this proprietary connectors to standard front panel connectors right here. And now you also might have noticed the power supply for the Optiplex is still in the system. So where the heck did this one come from? When I checked out my e-machines, I called this one a bomb. Here I am using it once more. And that's because I had to physically tear it out of my Optiplex system specifically for one single Molex connector because the fan controller box needed Molex. And that power supply straight up does not have a Molex connector. So I had to go and salvage this power supply out of that the e-machine over there, bring it all the way over just so I can power my fans. Like you would expect, a Dell Optiplex with a third gen i5 would have a Molex connector. But no, I guess not. Also, and one more minor thing before I go. Holy crap, did these fans require a lot of torque to screw in. I literally had to bust out a drill. So you guys know that I use my iFixit screwdriver kit for building computers and stuff. And with an iFixit kit, normally you can make this kind of shape, this like T-shape, and that gives you a little bit more torque. I could not do that with these screws. Because the way that fan screws work is that they have very like steep threading. And the actual screw holes on the fans themselves are just a little bit too small. So that when you're screwing the screws into the fans, into your case, it actually shreds the plastic just a little bit. And that really helps lock it in place. I really I really wanted to throw this graphics card in the system just to kind of see how it all slots in there But then I'm just gonna cover up all these weird connectors and then it's gonna be like really hard getting my hand in there and stuff So I'm just kind of at a standstill right now. There's not a whole lot else I can do Another reason that these power supplies suck so bad is because the four pin connector does it reach to the top of the motherboard? And now you'd probably just say, oh hey, use the power supply from that one. No, this one is even shorter. This one's like eight inches. This one's like 10 or 12, I don't know. Whatever it is, it doesn't reach. So even if I were to use that power supply, I'd still have to get like a SATA to Molex adapter just to power the god dang fans. So yeah, that's the point that I'm at right now. I can't really do anything else. I gotta put the system on hold and I gotta have my parents just be mad at me for another couple days while all this stuff sits out here. I will do my research. I will get all the weird, stupid proprietary plugs plugged in and working without producing errors. And I will get this system to work. I've invested too much money in it now and I can't exactly make that back without selling this system. So count on a part two, that is for sure. That's basically going to do it for now and if you like what you saw you know what to do and if you want to see more stuff like this make sure to get subbed below because i love making this stuff for you guys and as always have a good one Honey,